Hey y'all, Mikey from Rockin' K coming to you from nice rainy Germany. And with the rain, that means we've been inside doing some, some work with the, doing the renovation stuff. And right now we're doing the wiring that goes from the house here down to the lower barns back there. So I already put up part one of this. This is going to be part two. Uh, and there is going to be at least a part three, so let's do it. All right, so we are back in the lower barn area where we are going to set up all the electricity, the heavy electricity, the main lines from the house. So you saw me put the box on the wall down there and you saw me put the box on the wall down there. Now I need to connect that box there, up, over, and that is the old main line coming from the house, right there. Um, it is disconnected. It is no longer. Uh, it used to run, if you look up close, it used to run in those clips on those beams. And yes, that's a little beam of sunlight coming through. It used to run on those clips all across there. However, there is plans on redoing this roof. So I don't want the wire up there in harm's way. So what we're gonna do is we're actually going to put it on the wall down below here. Let me pull you back out there. We're gonna put it about beam level, just below the beams, all the way across the wall. Uh, so I will be un undoing these and letting them hang because right now that is actually feed off of the solar. That feed is off the, the larger solar system that I have on the um, homestead. It is not powered by solar panels yet. We haven't been able to get to that yet because it's going to require us a pergola and everything to mount the panels to. However, it is coming through the um, inverter in bypass mode. So I have a line that is in the ground that comes from the main box in the house that goes to the inverter. And in bypass mode, it feeds um, grid power through to these outlets and the lights that are up here. Uh, basically, it comes through the wall right here and then powers all the, the, the lights and stuff that are in here. And the idea is um, that once the panels are on and the batteries are hooked up, that it's going to power all the lighting and stuff down here. It will not power the big box. For one, the inverter is single phase and that box is three phase. So we're going to feed it um, directly from the house. The good thing is when I did the, the cable for the inverter, like I was saying earlier, there is uh, two cable channels that are in the ground one has data cables in it. We're going to go with a different data solution. And so I'm going to empty that. And the good thing is, is I can pull um, the string through to pull the wire back through, the, the earth cable back through, because it is a bulky earth cable. Um, I think its outer diameter is measuring like 20 millimeters and change. So it's, it's going to be a thick cable, at least thicker than my finger. Um, because it is four millimeter wire, heavier gauge, because we will be running um, three phase out here. And while smaller wire can handle the 16 amps, we're going to probably end up pulling, you know, a little more than that. So a little heavier wire, it's better. You know, we don't have to worry about it. Plus, my compressor is going to be on that leg. So, like I say, we're going we're gonna to string good, high-quality wire. I actually have it here on the floor. Let me flip you around. So there's all the tools, but there's the wire. 
This is the wire, the indoor wire. So this wire is actually about 17 millimeters ish, um, which is which is uh, big enough all in itself. But the earth cable, because it has a different type of jacket and a stronger jacket, is actually a little bit wider. So it's going to be sporty pulling that through the uh, the cable channel. So let me get you set up. I'll start marking the wall because the idea will be mark the wall up and start working our way across. Let me let that focus. Start working our way across this top and getting the this cable uh, conduit all mounted up so it can all be pretty. So away we go. So to make life easier, we're going to use the laser. This way I don't have to keep marking. I can go through and just put dash marks up the wall. And then I'll raise the laser up so that this line right here, I don't know if it's showing up. There is a horizontal line. You can see it right there. So that that's shooting across the bottom of those beams. Well, besides across my face right here. <laughs> All right, so that's that whole vertical run all drilled. Now, to manage to get the laser to aim across that, that's gonna be the fun part. So while it would've been ideal to use the laser, <clears throat> I can't get it up high enough to have it aim at the wall and have the line in the right spot. So it's gonna be just as easy, I guess, to use the level. So let's break out the level. So now that we got all the holes drilled across, I'm going ahead and going to put on all the inserts and attach the clamps. I'll tell you what folks, even though it's like a spring day and it's only like 50 degrees out, that roof is warm. I can feel it coming, coming down.
So now it's time to pull the cable. Um, I have some of the conduit up there. Uh, I got ready to pre-cut some of it, but the easiest way to pull cable is to make sure first off that you string it out and you make sure that it's not spun up. The other way is to leave it spooled up, put a rod through it and take it off the roll. Um, kind of like you take scotch tape off a roll. That ensures that there's no twist in the cable because it'll cause it to hang up in the um, the conduit. So what we're going to do is we're going to feed it from this end here. And we're going to feed it all the way across that way. I have it strung out so that we should have enough. Um, but it's going to be easiest to do this straight pull up here. And then we have a 90 right there. So the plan is to get the straight pull done and let it drape down enough to know that we can make it to the box. And then the rest has to go up and over. And then we got to string it through conduit on the other side. But that's not today. So first things first. Right up there, I'm going to have a short piece and then a 90. I got to get them on the wire first. So I got to pull the ladder over, measure that up, and then we'll get that and the 90 put on the cable. So as I was saying earlier, First, we got to get the short straight piece on the cable. And then there's 90. So the 90 is going to be tricky because it's not going to want to go down this cable. And of course, it's going to curl the cable a bit, so we'll have to uncurl it. So let's shoot this down the cable. All right, now that's gonna be close to where it needs to be. So now I'm gonna start shooting it down full runs of conduit. And that will get me to where I need to be. So I should need, I started counting. Each one of those clamps is 25 centimeters. So I should need these two here and the one that's up there. So let's shoot the two down the line and see how it looks. Blurry. All right, now that we got those two on there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually put it up on the wall with just those two runs and so I can get the last piece cut to size and yeah, we'll, we'll get there. All right, so we got it pulled and we got it all through the conduit. Show you, if you look, all through the conduit. However, it is about three foot too long. That's a lot of wire to waste, so it's not a big deal. I'm gonna scooch it back um, to where it needs to be and then thread it through the last piece of conduit. So. Let me get it balanced out and I'll be right back. All right, so now that's a little better. 
We do still have a couple inches extra, but not a couple feet extra. This wire is expensive. So, now I just have to strain through this last piece of conduit, but it is all the way through, around, and already partially thrown over. So, let's get this box open. Let's get this cable through. And we'll get ready to have this end terminated and then work on the other end. I don't think that's going to be today. So I'm sure there's a bunch of you out there that are going to be like, hey, you could do it this way or you could do it that way. There's a thousand ways to do this. So I could have pulled a string through and measured the string that would give me the wire length, all this. Or I could have pulled the wire through with a string. Um, this is heavy, heavy wire. Um, string would probably break because of the sheer weight of the wire. Um, if you noticed, there was an awful lot of um, clamping, as you can see up here, because it would end up dipping the, the conduit and because just the sheer weight of the wire. So while there's a thousand ways to do it, this is just the way I did it. Y'all might find an easier way or y'all might, might know an easier way, but this is just the way I did it. So, all right, so we'll open up the box. And then we're going to go ahead and measure the wire to strip it back about where we need it to be. I'm going to mark it quick. Now we should be ready to put it through that last piece of conduit. It's easier just to pull the DIN rail off and then I can get everything situated because I got to put a little bit of a bend on this cable. All right. Looks good. Have my electrician friend come down and button this up for me real quick. Um, he's not a big camera dude, so um, we'll come back. All right, so that's probably going to wrap this one up. So I had to wait a little bit, but no big deal. Um, got the wire in. It is hooked up to the ground fault interrupt. There's no power to it yet because... The other end still needs to be done. Um, as a matter of fact, the other end's just laying here in the lower barn. Um, the next steps 
are going to be to get the wire pulled up over the beams. So I have the new wire and the old four wire that have to go up and over right there and into what is actually, if you look, there's the back of a Mustang. It's another garage. So we'll get it pulled up and over. Um, that's going to be another day because it is like six o'clock now and I'm a little hungry. Mama's making food and I'm going to edit this and I'm going to put it all together with all the work down here and get it out to you guys. So you know what I'm about to say. If you're thinking about family, if you're thinking about friends, give them the what's up or the what's app. You know, you'd like to hear from them too. And until the next installment, off you to Zane.